Okay, so firstly, you might have noticed that I've not posted any videos for the last, well, over a month. So apologies for that, but have been particularly busy trying to sort things out on the business side of things. So I haven't had as much time to put these videos together. The good thing is that's now made a backlog of videos and so I've got lots of content coming up in the future. Today, the video is going to be on building the Arbor injection machine, which is a revision of the Precious Plastics injection machine, and it's released by Sustainable Design Studio in the UK. So I ordered this machine from Rory over at the Sustainable Design Studio, and uh, just to give you a few ideas on specs, it is a fairly large machine, but it is designed to fit in a garage or a workshop or anything. So when it's built, it will probably be a similar size to me. It's got a 150 gram shot size. So that's the maximum amount of plastic that can be injected into whatever mold you decide to create. That's sort of your, your size limit, uh, depending on how you use that material. And for me, I've purchased this machine with a view for recycling using the print waste to turn into genuine objects like coasters and plant pots and buttons and things that you might have seen if you follow the precious plastics movement already. This machine is rated as 450 watts. It has a maximum temperature of 280 degrees. It has a warm up time of two minutes and can work with a wide variety of plastics from PLA, ABS, PTG, LDPE, HDPE, most things basically. There are two options for this machine. The first option at 1600 great British pounds is the DIY kit. That's everything in kit form completely. And even the electronics box is also, you need to assemble it yourself and put together the electronics. Or you can go for the fully built kit, which is still a kit. Um, you have to do, you still have to put the mechanics together, but things like this, the electronics will be put together for you. And that is 1800 pounds. So that's what I've gone for here. The one thing I would note is that the packaging from Sustainable Design Studio is all recycled, which is great, but it is a little bit of a jumble sale when it arrives. So personally, I think you probably should go for the fully built kit because it's hard enough getting your head around what things are in mechanical form, let alone if you start throwing in electronics to that as well. So personally, I'm glad I went for the fully built kit. Anyway, now we're gonna put this together. It says it should only take about 10 minutes, so let's get started. <laughs> So if you were to order the completely DIY kit, the first thing you would need to do is assemble this unit. This is the temperature controller, power supply, that sort of thing. And that's obviously done in this fully built kit. The second thing you would need to do is assemble the barrel. This is obviously the part that gets hot and where the plastic is melted. This bit again is done for you on the fully built kits. And then the third and final step is to put it all together. So that's what we're gonna do now. It says you're gonna need a few tools, a digital multimeter, an adjustable spanner and wrench that was actually included, metric Allen keys. Again, they sent some of these over, needle nose pliers, and then I presume also a 12 millimeter hex key because again, this was included. Okay, so first step is to take this large piece here, which is the base, and it says place it on the floor, but so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna start it on the bench, and if I need to move it down in a minute, I will do so. We're then gonna take these big bars and connect them to the base. It says the alignment is different on this top and bottom, so if it doesn't line up, turn it over. Place them in like so. We're gonna need some of these big bolts. It says to put washers on either side of the bolt. And tighten with these M10 lock nuts. Nice and tight. Same again. So one of these pieces has some holes midway up, which will be for mounting the electronics box. Just gotta keep that on the outside. Now we're gonna take these plates here, which are the bearing plates. 
attach these 30 millimeter bearings, nice green bearing here. We're using these nice thick chunky M14 through like so, another washer and then the lock nut on the back. So that's that, then do the same again on the other one and the other one. So we're going to take the 30 diameter shaft. These steps are already done. I presume that's partly because it's the built kit. So this is already set up and aligned. We've got to add a rubber washer to each side of the shaft and then four mil and a 10 mil spacer. The bearing assembly, insert the shaft into it. Now we've got these steel spacers here, steel spacers. The instructions aren't great at this point. Uh, but I presume it wants the shim at the top like that and then secure it into place here. Put the spacer in and then take the other bearing plate and attach that on as well. Five minutes later. When you put all that together, you should be looking something a little bit like this and I found it an absolute nightmare to get all that together. So I suggest for this step, just make sure these bolts aren't too tight. It just gives a little bit more play. And then in this next step, we should be able to tighten it all up once we connect it to the top of these poles. 65 mil M10s again, put the washers on ready, just so I can get it into place quite quickly as it's quite heavy. Lower it over like that. And tighten these up. A few minutes later. And I'm gonna connect the center heat resistant plates. I've got two different plates, this one and this one. This one's got a few more holes in for wires. So we've got to take the one that doesn't have as many holes in. Thread it through, thread it through. It's through. And then we've got to take the barrel unit and align the notches with the top plate of the barrel. Something a bit like that. And we've got to take the other heat plate and the one with the holes are in goes to the same side as the holes on the outer bar. Like so. While the barrel is not fully fixed, slide the arbor rack with teeth aligned with the spur gear and place the barrel underneath the rack when in place. Right, I'm struggling to get that in, so I'm going to loosen off these bearings again. It's time to put the barrel in place. M5 by 55 bolts, putting them down the side. And this is not the easiest of manoeuvre. Get them ready held into place with that. That's completely on the floor now, so you know that's the exact height. And we're gonna build the handle. So you take these two yellow handle pieces, and we've got three of these black handles using M8 by 40 bolts. So that's these so pieces onto the handle like that with a washer, then through the bar, and through the yellow piece on the other side, and another washer, and an M8 nut. Same again for the other three. These handlebars attach. We take this ring, set the M8 by 20 mil bolt through, and put it on here to hold this handle in place. Handle on. Right, we're now going to add the plunger, which is this piece here. This is what goes through into the injection mold. You don't want to do it too tight to give the uh, barrel a little bit of movement. This is rolling quite nicely actually. Next we need to add the hopper, which is this guy. So to do that, we're going to bring the plunger right out. And position it and secure that into the barrel. 
Okay, so this is how we're looking at the moment. We've got the frame all assembled. We've got the heat mount all assembled. We've got the barrel here. We've got the hopper on now. We've got the plunger and the handles. It's just about not hitting the ceiling. So we're all good. X mounting plate and attach that on there as well. Now taking the electronics box, add four M5 standoffs. That said, I don't know where they are. So they are not something I've seen with this machine. So for now, I will just temporarily screw it in place and I'll speak to Rory to see if he can get me some of those sent over. So I've just left that on there, not too tight for now. Uh, and I'll speak to Rory to see if we need these standoff spacer things, which just hold the box off the mount a little bit more. But anyway, we can proceed to plug everything in. We've got all these connectors ready done for the electronics box. It come in at the bottom, supposedly color coded, but there aren't any color codes. So it says they should be color coded, but they aren't, they're all the same, they're not labeled. So I've just plugged them in for now because they all go into the same holes, but I will again check that and add it to the description if there's any, any point of concern with that. Now I'm gonna secure the base plate onto the bottom here. That's on. Now we're going to take the jack down into the base plate like this. I'm going to take the barrel nozzle, screw that on. Okay, so we do have some holes in the bottom of this jack uh, and some screw holes down below. So we should be able to screw it down, although we've used up all the screws. Put it right up high and you would be able to get some screws down into that. As I've run out of screws, what I'm gonna do for now is just nick two from this electronics box. And then we've got this, the jack plate, which goes on like so. So that's that. That's this machine now fully built, more or less. There's a few parts that look like they might be missing. So I'm gonna reach out to Rory at Sustainable Design Studio, let him know, and uh, see if he can point me in the right direction don't forget to hit subscribe and smash the like button if you enjoyed this video this machine is going to feature in some future videos and we're going to be recycling 3d print waste using this machine and making some other really cool stuff like coasters plant pots soap dishes i think it could make for an interesting series discussing the recycling side of 3d printing Obviously, I'm not expecting everyone who owns a 3D printer to go out and purchase one of these machines, but I think it's the sort of machine that every makerspace should have. First impressions of the actual build of the machine, I think 10 minutes was a bit of a massive exaggeration. It took a fair bit longer than that, and there's a few points to watch out for. Alignment of things and making sure everything's properly mirrored, which could have been clearer in the assembly guide. But at the end of the day, it's all fairly straightforward stuff so nothing that's uh, too problematic i'm sure the using of this machine will be just as much as a learning curve and i'm looking forward to do that it does feel like quite a bit of kit for the price point 1800 pounds um which includes vat if you are a vat registered business so i do think it's, it's quite a lot of bang for your buck and i'm really looking forward to using it it's really sturdy really strong and it's going to be a great little addition to this setup. One thing to note is it's not designed to be portable, so it is designed to be mounted on something solid. Uh, that said, I'm I'm semi tempted to stick it on some really heavy duty caster wheels just to make it a little bit more mobile because it shouldn't really shouldn't really cause any problems doing that. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'm happy to be back. I'd love to know what you thought of this slightly different side video. I hope you enjoyed and will stay with me for the rest of the 3D Tomorrow journey. Cheers for watching, guys. Catch you later. Bye.